Hi, I'm Rashonda Cade. This is Writing with Rashonda, and we're going to talk tonight a little bit about how to reduce the number of B verbs you use in your writing. And I'm wearing my cowboy hat tonight because I promised a student I would wear it to class, and I hadn't done it yet, so I thought, why not wear it now? So the first thing in reducing B verbs is understanding why you would want to do it. B verbs um, are troublesome because they do two dichotomous things. One is they're not super specific. But two, they also say, I am saying the truth. This thing is, it exists in this state of being. And life isn't always like that. Additionally, they slow down your writing. So it's good to avoid be verbs as often as you can. So here are some tips on how to avoid be verbs in your writing, or if you find you have a lot of be verbs in your writing, to do something to take some of them out. First, identify the be verbs. You won't know what to take out if you don't know what they are. The be verbs are am, is, are, was, were, be, been, being. I'll repeat that. Am, is, are, was, were, be, been, being. So anytime you see any of those words in your sentences, circle them, underline them, highlight them, notate them in some sort of way so you can be on the lookout for ways to reduce the number of times you use them. The second thing you can do, I'm looking at my notes up on my screen, is substitute a stronger verb. For example, I feel like chips and salsa are delightful. So if we look at the sentence, chips and salsa are delightful, the be verb are is right there in the middle of that sentence. Sometimes another verb pops into your head. The verb taste comes to mind for me. Chips and salsa taste delightful. So you've been more specific you said that they taste delightful, and that helps your readers understand what you're going for better. Another thing you can do is verb another word in the sentence. Technically, I should say you should find another word in the sentence that you can use as a verb, but when I'm in class, I say verb another word. So if we have the sentence, for example, um, Octavia E. Butler was the author of the novel Wild Seed. Octavia E. Butler was the author of the novel Wild Seed. So we have was in the middle of there. And that's a be verb. What are the other words in the sentence? Octavia, Butler, author, novel, Wild Seed. Well, the word author can be used as a verb. We could say Octavia E. Butler authored the novel Wild Seed. And you will find that a lot of times there is some other word somewhere in your sentence that you can verb and use instead of the be verb. This example was pretty simple. I just swapped it out. Sometimes you have to do a little bit of rearranging, but that's part of what makes writing so much fun. And then the last quick tip for reducing the number of be verbs in your writing is to combine sentences. So say we have the sentences, Pauline Hopkins was an African American woman, and the sentence, Pauline Hopkins wrote the novel Contending Forces. Well, it's kind of choppy having those two sentences back to back and choppy starting them both with Pauline Hopkins, but we can combine them and we can say Pauline Hopkins, an African-American woman, wrote the novel Contending Forces. So there you have it. Some reasons to avoid using be verbs in your writing and four ways to reduce them. The first is identify the be verbs. The second is, oh, what is the second? The second is substitute. A stronger verb. The third is to verb another word in the sentence. And the fourth is to combine sentences. So those are my quick tips for reducing the number of be verbs in your sentences. I'm Rashonda Cade and this is Writing with Rashonda. Thanks!